Hello, I was recently given this DVW A500 digital beta cam recorder. It takes this kind of tape. But that's a slightly unusual model to find in the UK because that's an NTSC machine and we're in a PAL country. And on the back it's marked up that the mains input voltage 100 volts, which implies it's come from uh, probably a Japanese uh, country rather than USA. Right, we need to work out exactly what the voltage is for this because it's been used in the UK. It may be that the power supply has been swapped over for a 230 volt one. I do have the service manual for the PAL version, but I haven't managed to find a service manual for this NTSC one. So I think what we're going to do is just take a look at the power supply in here and see if we can work out what the proper supply voltage is for this machine. The service manual does help insofar as it tells us a little bit about the power supply that is in the uh, PAL machine, uh, but it doesn't tell us an awful lot about how to get to it. It may be that it's in a different part of the manual that I don't have. So I'm just going to have to take the lid off and have a look. Now this has been used in a rack, I think. The side panels are slightly loose and it has no feet. Uh, so we just need to bear that in mind a little bit as we drag it around. Right, the power supply is going to be next to the power input socket, I suspect. Let's go and have a look at the back. But is this the power supply or is just this a cover? If it was the power supply and that's printed on the actual power supply itself, then 100 volts it actually is. Let's uh, take a little bit apart. It's such a heavy machine, makes it slightly awkward to work on. We'll start by just taking the lid off. That's easy. Okay, there's some arrows here that tell us to undo these screws. Will that bring the power supply out? Let's have a look. Great thing about Sony equipment, there are arrows to tell you which parts to undo, and there's no arrow for these screws, so I believe they remain in. Right, what happens when I pull? Okay, so this is <laughs> part of the power supply. It's the first board to the input filter. Let's start by having a look at that, see if we can glean anything from it. Okay, so this is the mains filter board. Uh, it's got enough dust on it that it looks like it probably is the original one. The breaker is rated at 250 volts. The filter capacitor is rated at 275 volts AC. Everything here appears to be rated at 250 volts at least. Let's just see if that's the same part number as the one installed in the uh, PAL machine. So it says AC155. So looking at the diagram for the PAL machine, it says AC connector board with breaker uh, is AC139. Uh, but here our board is AC155 and does appear to have different connectors on it and a different layout. So we must assume then that this machine genuinely is uh, a 100 volt input machine. But I'll admit something now. When I first tested this, at one point it was plugged into 240 volts, 230 volts, and it worked just fine. It didn't pop the breaker, it didn't complain. It seems a bit unlikely, doesn't it? I know Sony over-engineer their things, but the power supply is actually capable of taking over double the correct input voltage, and it just works? What do you think? Is that real? Well, let's reassemble this. Right, that's um, ready to reassemble. Quite a fiddly thing to get the PCB back in place on that. Right, so I can... Uh, put all the screws and clips and things in now. Okay, that's fully reassembled now. I just need to reconnect the earth terminal here and plug the connector back in there. But I'm still thinking it would be a great deal easier if I was to obtain a second hand power supply for this, which is uh, 230 volt rated. So on the assumption that might be possible one day, what's involved in getting the power supply out of here? Right, this manual is not going to help me dismantle down to the power supply, but it does tell me that in the maintenance manual part one, section six, tells us about replacement of the 
power block and circuit boards. So let's see if I can get the NTSC manual, uh, so that's for the A500, available as the maintenance manual part one, and maybe it'll help us a little bit on how to get the power block out. Okay, so having looked at the service manual, it appears that we need to gain access from underneath to unplug the power supply, so we'll have a look at that. But it also warns us that electrical adjustments are required after replacement. Hmm. Is that truly the case, or is that just an abundance of caution? Because if I was to replace this power supply with one from a 230 volt model, uh, would I have to make any adjustments? And we're also assuming, of course, that that's all you need to do that there's no other changes in the machine that are different between the NTSC and PAL versions. Obviously there are internal differences because it's got different electronics for the different video formats, but it would be extremely unlikely, I would have thought, that there would be any difference in the output from the power supply between the NTSC and PAL models. What do you think? Right, anyway, let's have a look at uh, how easy it is to uh, get the power supply out. If anyone does have a scrap machine of this model, a set of feet would be handy. There were, I have got rubber feet of various sorts that I could push into service. We have something that looks like rust here, but it's not. They've used some kind of sticky foam on the base and that's disintegrated like this foam often does. I've got foam like that that's disintegrated to the same sort of mush in my 1972 Hillman Avenger. Uh, so that's just gungy rather than rusty. So what you have to do, I believe, is unplug these connectors and then slide the power supply out. Should we just prove we can do that? Um, there may be cable ties to argue with and other things, but let's just see how we get along with that. Quite fiddly. You have to push the tab in and get the wires out, but there's not a lot of room to pull them out. This metal bracket here is just thoroughly in the way. Why did they put that there? Okay, so we have those four multi-way connectors. Oh, there's another one, a fifth one down here with a few extra wires. Right, no push tab for that one. So we have those all unplugged. So now I believe there are six screws to undo from here and it should slide out. I don't believe it's six screws, no. I can see one there and one there. Two screws. I must have misread instructions. Okay, what you have to do is feed this wire out of the way. And that wire, I think, goes off to the power switch at the front. So we need to unplug that one too. Right, now, perhaps, it will come out. Right, we have the model number there, the part number, and we can confirm that that is correct for the... Well, let's find out. Is that 100 volt or 110 volt? SOSP1042A. Looking at one of the two PCBs that's in the power supply, the main ones anyway, this board here is part number... Well, it's called SOSP... 1042D, if you look at that upside down, and the one in the schematic for the PAL machine is 1042B, and I've got this upside down so that it's the same way round as the schematic, so you've got the connector there for mains in, connector there which goes down to the other board inside there, I don't know if you can see it, there's a connector there goes inside, so I've got them the same way round. And you can see a lot of it is very similar between, say, this schematic or the uh, PCB layout here and this one. It's similar, like you've got the three lines down here and the three lines going down here and the same connector positions and this big inductor here, but it's clearly not the same PCB. So I have, at this point, convinced myself that this is not the correct power supply for a 240 volt use case. Well, I had convinced myself, and then a couple of things came along to change my mind. Right, let's show you that. 
not wishing to strip this whole thing down because there's nothing actually wrong with it, but look at the first mains filter capacitor there. It's 47 microfarad, 450 volts. You wouldn't fit that in a power supply that's intended for a 100 or 110 volt operation normally, unless it's being done because you're trying to keep your component uh, count down. But ordinarily, you would use a lower voltage capacitor there. So that's saying to me that this power supply is uh, 240 volt capable, even though, unfortunately, the markings on it don't help us at all in that respect. But the markings do help us in another way, because I looked up this SOSP 1042A and found somebody selling one, which was boxed. And guess what? It's marked up for the PAL machine, which tells us this power supply is suitable for a PAL machine. Lots of contradictory information here. Right, for the time being, I'm going to reassemble this. Uh, this is another one of these boards that has a certain amount of glue on it. So uh, I'm going to reassemble this and put it back in the machine. Don't forget to plug the, the fan in, of course, over here. It's actually a little bit fiddly plugging the fan in. I've just dropped a screw down there. Oh, what a nuisance. I'm going to have to fish that out. So it's gone down here, I think. It's got to come out. Probably somewhere down here. There's a blank here. If I take that off, maybe I can get to the screw if it's sitting on this bottom shelf. Well, side panel. So if I tip the machine up, maybe the screw will come along here. Oh, it could be anywhere. Can't be left, it's going to have to be found. Might mean taking the back panel off. Oh dear. Which will almost certainly involve taking out all these screws. There's a lot of them. Let's see, see how it comes apart. Oh, well, maybe it won't because there's arrows on these. So maybe I just need to undo the ones that have got arrows. Okay, not so bad. But where's the screw gone? So I dropped it from here, so it will have fallen down here. Or maybe it's landed in this board somewhere. Oh. Probably stuck in this I.O. panel. I'm going to flip the machine over, which is not easy given its weight, and see if I can tip it out. I still haven't put the connectors in on the back of the power supply yet either. Aha! I can see the screw in there. Right. There it is. I'll not make that mistake again. I'm going to put it in here now so it can't uh, fall anywhere. Right, I'll refit the back panel, including the blank, and also reconnect all the power supply cables. So having probably ascertained that the power supply is the same on either model, is it the case potentially that the breaker here is different? It says six on it. Let's look over the breaker on the uh, PAL machine. So here's a PAL machine and it's also got a six amp breaker. And notice also what it says on the back of it is 100 to 240 volts AC. 
So the power machine is capable of working down to 100 volts. Must we assume, therefore, that the 100 volt machine is OK to use in PAL regions at 240 volts? So uh, here we are, it's all put back together again. It's connected to my 230 volt uh, isolation transformer, 230, 240. Right, so power that up. Okay, this has probably got a power recording on it. So uh, let's switch it to its own tin internal test signal. And it's recording. You can see a lot of flicker because this camcorder you're using is set for 25 frames and of course this is 30 frames appearing on this TV. That's all okay. And that's it playing back its uh, internal test tape. So in general, it would never be acceptable to plug a piece of equipment that is intended for 100 volt operation into UK mains. But this would be an extremely rare exception. Now, if you have any information on why the input socket is marked 100 volts when the machine is capable of up to 240 volt operation, uh, do let me know. It seems an odd choice by Sony when their PAL machines do specify that they will accept any mains input voltage. We have solar panels in this house and that's important because the solar panels can generate energy that then goes back into the grid. In order to be able to push current into the grid you are inevitably going to have a somewhat higher voltage here in order to drive some current the other way even allowing for the very low uh, resistance of those cables. The, the mains cables feed to the house. So I have seen on sunny days the mains voltage in this house approaching 250 volts, which would be outside the acceptable range on this, uh, unless they've built some good margin in, which presumably they have. Right, I hope you've enjoyed us messing about with this uh, NTSC digital beta cam machine. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Yeah.